Welcome to our review on transport in plants. First thing we need to understand are two key terms and their meanings. When we're talking about the transpiration stream, we're talking about the thing that's going to be moving water and dissolve minerals through the xylem. And when we're talking about translocation, we're talking about the transport of sugars through the phloem. Thinking about the process of transpiration then, we're actually talking about the loss of water from the leaves by evaporation. Now sometimes they like to ask you to write the definition for transpiration and there's two ways that we can get our marks here. We can either say it's the loss of water from the leaves by evaporation or we can say it's the loss of water vapour from the leaves. If you use the phrase water vapour do not then say by evaporation because we can't evaporate water vapour it's already been evaporated. So what we actually find then is if we think about our plant, then water and minerals are going to be absorbed through those root hair cells in the root. Now the reason we use those root hair cells is to increase the surface area of the roots so that this can happen faster. And then once the water's inside our plant, it's got to flow up the stem to the leaves through our xylem. And then the water is going to leave the plant by evaporation in this process of transpiration. So the reason our plant actually needs water in the first place is for four important reasons. Firstly, photosynthesis. We know that water is needed for photosynthesis. It's one of those raw materials. Secondly, as that water evaporates from our leaves of the plant, it's going to cool them down. It's also going to be used to help support the plant in making those cells turgid, as we saw in a previous lesson. And it's our way of transporting minerals because the minerals become dissolved in the water and then as the water moves, the minerals move. What we've got here is a diagram representing the transpiration stream. So if we start in the bottom left corner, we can see our root hair cell, which obviously we can identify by that big bit that sticks out, whole purpose to increase the surface area. Now our water and minerals from the soil go into our root hair cell, and then they're passed through cell to cell until they reach the xylem vessels. Now, once they're in those xylem vessels, they're carried up the stem into the leaves, and then the water's going to cross down through those cells, through obviously our stomata, and then out into the environment as it evaporates. There are a few ways that our plants can actually control the amount of water they lose through transpiration. The first way is if we think back to when we looked at the structure of our leaves, we saw that it had this waxy cuticle on the upper and lower surfaces. Now, the whole purpose behind that is to prevent water evaporating through it. The second thing that they can do to reduce their water loss is minimize the amount of stomata present. So if they've got fewer stomata, less water can be lost through them. If we consider plants that live in very dry areas, things like our marum grass, then they've become specialized by having very few stomata which are actually located on the inner surface of a leaf. And those leaves are special because they can actually be rolled up and then that means that any water that evaporates is kept in the one area and that slows the rate of evaporation. The other thing our plants can do is around those stomata, remember we've got these guard cells and they can then control whether the stomata is open or closed. If we think about how the guard cells actually do this then, they're located on either side of the stoma. Now, as water is taken in by osmosis to those guard cells, which always occurs when there's plenty of light and water available, then they swell up and become turgid. Now, as a result of that, those guard cells bend, and that means that the stoma are open. If, however, we're in a situation where there's only a limited amount of water present, then our guard cells are flaccid. So that means they're not going to be bending outwards so that the stoma will remain closed. And that therefore prevents our plant from losing any extra water when it doesn't have large amounts available.